Who's your favourite character from Mortal Kombat? Sub-Zero. Because he's literally the coolest. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mortal Kombat is one of the most successful video game franchises of all time, with millions of copies sold and over a dozen games in the series, which makes for a lot of money and uppercuts. One of the reasons the series is so famous, or rather infamous, is the inclusion of fatalities, a kind of victory dance where you get to murder your opponent super, super hard. Given how synonymous fatalities are now with the Mortal Kombat franchise, it's weird to think that the original creators of the game didn't actually expect anybody to find all of the fatalities in the first Mortal Kombat game in the series. Where did the idea for fatalities actually come from? Well, the story goes that early in the development of Mortal Kombat, an idea was thrown around to have the final boss of the game, Shang Tsung, cut your head off with a sword if he managed to beat you. And all the people making the game said this idea was too cool not to implement at other points in the game, because obviously Shang Tsung being the final boss, like half the players playing this game in the arcades might not even ever fight him. So I believe someone suggested, and a paraphrase quote is, what if the player could be this badass too? And that obviously extended to the idea of fatalities. With this idea in mind, John Tobias and Ed Boon, the original creators of Mortal Kombat, set about giving every single character a unique finishing move. Weirdly, despite the extra effort they went to, giving every single character a bonus murder-death kill move to style on their opponents at the end of a match, John Tobias would later report that he never actually expected anybody to have the patience or dexterity to find them all. Why would no one find the fatalities? Well, one, um, you had to stand a specific distance away from your opponent while they were in the dizzy state, depending on which character you were playing as. Obviously, that's something that wasn't communicated to the player. So even if you knew a specific fatality input, if you didn't stand the exact right distance away, it wouldn't work. And also, the input was just a random string of button presses that also wasn't communicated to the player that didn't really have any bearing on gameplay. So like, they, it wasn't just do a special move from a specific distance away. It was just like input like three different directions, a very specific distance away, and then press this specific punch or kick. And then you'll like rip your opponent's head off. Johnny Cage wins. If they're in the game because Boone and Tobias thought they were too awesome to just include once, why make them so impossible to find? Well, Tobias and Boone's reasoning was, and this is actually quite genius, by making fatalities something that they didn't advertise and that people didn't know was in the game, they theorised that eventually someone, somewhere, would do one by accident at the end of a game and their mind would just be blown and the opponent they were playing against would be like, what the fuck was that? And what, what would you do after that? you put more money in the machines to try and figure it out again. And then rumours would spread of like, did you hear in this game you can rip your opponent's head off? No, you can't. No, you did. My mate's cousin saw someone do it. No, they didn't. Mortal Kombat has a lot of these, like especially early in the game's life cycle. And I think in the first version of Mortal Kombat again, they added a secret character, Reptile, who was a rumour for the first few months the game even existed. Because to like, unlock him and fight against him, you had to like, do a load of really obscure shit, including winning a round with a double perfect without blocking, which obviously no one's ever going to do willingly, so like, no one found this character. And to make things even worse, he wasn't even in the game as a playable character until the third update of the arcade machine, meaning there were people out there who heard about it and knew that like, reptiles in the game, but they might have had the wrong version of the machine and not been able to fight him. Can you imagine how disappointing it'd be to go through that game and like and go, beat someone with a double perfect without blocking and then not fight Reptile? Uh, but, but I think potentially my favourite one is in Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. You fight against Scorpion and in that game there is an easter egg where you can make him not say his trademark line of get over here when obviously he throws out his spear. Yeah. And people don't believe me when I tell them this, so you can put the clip in. If you dodge his spear several times in a row, instead of get over here, he will say, get the fuck over here. And it's the only time I'm aware of in any game where that line changes. And if you continue dodging it, eventually when he does grab you and he pulls you towards you, instead of saying get over here, he just says, come here, bitch. And that's great. I want that to be in all the games. Well, in fact, that's the only game they changed that line, and I don't understand why, because that's a way cooler line, isn't it? Like, Mortal Kombat X is already a game where you're, like, tearing people's heads off. What's the harm in just putting one F-bomb in there? <laughs> 
So it took months for people to discover that Reptile was even there in the first place. Yeah, because you have to remember at the time the first Mortal Kombat game was released in arcades, secret characters weren't really a thing. So you can probably imagine how many arcade fist fights would start between kids going, you know there's a secret third ninja who wears green armour? It's like, no, that's a lie. No, my cousin saw it. And then boom, 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 fist fight. Those kids aren't talking for the next three years. Friendship over. <laughs> but you're probably thinking, okay, like, Reptile was potentially more obscure than Fatalities. So how long did it take people to discover Fatalities? Do you want to know how long it took? How long? Less than a day. The wow. game hadn't even been officially released before someone found the Fatality. Because according to John Tobias, during playtesting, so before the game was even technically out, these like just, they're just testing the machines to make sure they work and see if people will enjoy the game before they want to make any final change for the final release. He said on that very first day, a kid who was 12 years old walked up to the machine and accidentally did Sub-Zero's head rip. Oh, ah! And obviously that kid's mind was fucking blown. <laughs> but John Tobias, being an absolute stone pimp badass, absolutely refused to acknowledge that the kid had done it. And the kid spent the rest of the day trying to convince people using the machine that it was a secret move to rip people's head off. And he even went over to John Tobias and said, Mr, Mr, like, this is your machine, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah it is. You saw me rip the guy's head off, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. But there's a secret move in it where you can do it, isn't there? Nope. No. I never heard of that. No, there is. And do you know what that kid did? He spent the rest of the day like, trying to convince people and then spent all of his money trying to recreate it. And then John Spice like, we're fucking on something here. <laughs> this is a good idea. <laughs> what did? Well, he was a businessman, not a babysitter. I like to put that out there. Well, that's like, that proves that the idea they had of like, people are gonna go fucking mental trying to figure out how to do this. And I feel so sorry for that kid because apparently he did it just like playing against the AI. Yeah. He wasn't even playing against an opponent, so there was two of them. It was just him on his own. And the first thing he did was accidentally rip the opponent's head off. And he's like, how did I do that? Mister, how did I do that? I'm not telling you, a secret. <laughs> what a dick move, what a dick move, I love it. Mortal Kombat is a series known for its comedic ultraviolence and surprisingly deep world building, which has led to a phrase coined by fans which is, you come for the gore, stay for the lore. Speaking of lore, did you know that the character of Johnny Cage originally was going to be Jean-Claude Van Damme? So what does Jean-Claude Van Damme got to do with uh, Mortal Kombat? Well, a lot in fact, and he is indirectly responsible for the entire fucking series because originally Mortal Kombat was going to be a Jean-Claude Van Damme vehicle. So it was supposed to be a Jean-Claude Van Damme action game and then later it was going to be a combat game with him playing the titular character and the story behind it is apparently the producers of Universal Soldier were like you know what is really hot right now those fucking video game things all the kids are playing let's put Jean-Claude Van Damme in a video game and they approached Midway Games and they went would you make a Jean-Claude Van Damme action game? They went uh, yeah that sounds baller as fuck, we'll get right on it. And they set about digitizing Jean-Claude Van Damme and they put him into like a basic level where he's running around kicking people to show Jean-Claude Van Damme himself to sell him on the idea. And apparently the deal just fell through because uh, apparently Jean-Claude Van Damme do not want to be in a video game kicking the shit out of people. And as I'm saying, I expect in the background, just panning across, is the greatest title piece of media in history, which is Street Fighter, the movie, the video game. <laughs> So Jean-Claude Van Damme didn't want anything to do with this fighting game? No, but Midway kind of liked the idea of like, you know, a combat game with featuring digitised actors. And what they did is they retooled the idea to become Mortal Kombat. And um, there's a great story about behind Mortal Kombat. Apparently um, they were just going to originally call it Combat with a K because they thought it looked cooler. And prior to that, when Van Damme was involved, do you know what the name of the game was? Um, Van Damme. After Van Damme didn't want anything to do with the project, uh, they took away the name Van Damme. And I think they originally were going to like Kumite, it was one of the names, or Dragon Fighter was another one. And they settled on Combat with a K and then put the Mortal in front of it and they went, well, the rest is history. Mortal fucking Combat. And I think one of my favourite long running just things in gaming is the fact that in Mortal Combat, every single fucking thing with a C is always spelled with a K to the point where when you're playing the game, Character select is with a K, continue is with a K, everything is with a K, and it, so, uh, it annoyed me until I realised they'd fully committed to the gimmick. And when I when I clicked on it, it says continue with a K. I went, you know what? I'm not even mad at this point. You've stuck to it. You've committed. I'm happy with that. Do you know what I mentioned at the beginning? Like Mortal Kombat has like you know surprisingly deep lore and world building. 
Like, I'm not fucking kidding. So do you have a, do you know the backstory to why Johnny Cage has superpowers? Because Johnny Cage, like, he can do, he's got the green energy. They actually call it just green energy in the game. And he can, like, you know, do the shadow kick and the shadow ball. Right? And the explanation for that is Johnny Cage is inexplicably a descendant of a warrior race that was bred specifically to fight for the amusement of the gods in the Mortal Kombat universe. And they had this mysterious green energy. And Johnny Cage can use that now. Isn't that weird? Isn't that fucking cool? I mean... Oh no, I love it. I, I, I love all, like, all the, the backstories in Mortal Kombat are amazing. Like, like Sub-Zero, like my main man. I fucking love the idea of that. Um, Sub-Zero in the games is the second Sub-Zero. And his brother died to become Noob Sabot. A Noob Cybot in the new game is just like the Roast Master extraordinaire. There are like super cuts out there. All he does is just annihilate people in the pre-match banter. Like, I think Shao Kahn's like, oh, join me and conquer realms. And Noob Cybot's like, name one realm you control. Ooh. It's like, it's so bad. Like, have you seen some of the interactions in that game? They're amazing. Uh, you've shown me a few. Like, every character in the game has half an hour of unique interactions with every other character in the game, including themselves. And they have multiple ones. And they're all hilarious. Like, Johnny Cage... Um, I think he fights Garrus, like, a man who can like control time and has lived like basically since the dawn of existence. And he, he says to Johnny Cage, like, actors leave no mark on history. Do you know what Johnny Cage's like response to that is? What? Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Which means that Ronald Reagan exists. He was an Earth Realm president. <laughs> it's like, that's so fucking good. I think it's like Kung Lao as well, like the guy with the weird like the hat. All he ever talks about is his hat. He's all he knows his personality is based on that hat. Uh, one hat man to another. Cool hat. But your hat is no weapon. Well, that's just weird, Kung Lao. So Jean-Claude Van Damme didn't want to be in the game. No, but he's still technically in the game because um, they decided after like, you know, they went, okay, we're gonna make an, a fighting game featuring digitized actors. Fuck it, we're putting Jean-Claude Van, Van Damme in anyway. And they made a character called Johnny Cage. And Johnny Cage, as likeness and moveset, is based on that of Jean-Claude Van Damme. And as if they weren't, like, you know, happy with, like, jacking Van Damme's likeness, they establish in the story that Johnny Cage is an egocentric dickhead actor who uh, only joins the Mortal Kombat tournament to prove that he's, like, a good martial artist and it's not all done with, like, stunt guys and all that crap. <laughs> the unnecessary dunking of Jean-Claude Van Damme. You know what? I, I don't want to work on this project. Okay, we're going to pay homage to you in this game by basing the biggest dickhead character in it on you. They even went as far as like Johnny Cage's original costume in Mortal Kombat 1 is the costume that Jean-Claude Van Damme wears in Bloodsport, like the, um, the black trousers with the red sash. And then they gave him the split punch, the package check, like the best move in the game, is based on something that Jean-Claude Van Damme doesn't want to do. He just does the splits and punches the guy in the nuts. This is the move. This is the one that like Johnny Cage has to fucking do this. And it's the singular most effective move in the world because it, like, it even works on Goro. Like, even Goro, like, the four-armed Shokan Prince, like, undefeated in combat for, like, 5,000 years or some shit. Even he is susceptible to a good old punch in the balls. You'd think one arm would protect his nuts, no. wouldn't you? No, straight in the nose. And they put it in the movie, which is fantastic. Like, the Mortal Kombat movie where just Johnny Cage punches Goro in the nuts. It's brilliant. <laughs> Can we just for a moment talk about how bad that movie is? Because for years, like, they never acknowledged it in any way in Mortal Kombat canon, except for like one throwaway line in Mortal Kombat X like 15 years later. And then, for the marketing for Mortal Kombat 11, the final trailer they did, they played the song. You know, the song they've never used in any piece of media ever since that film came out. They played it for the trailer and it's like, you know what? You just sold a game. The fact you will have the balls to put that shitty piece of techno crap in your trailer for your like $300 million game, you've got me. That's awesome. Also, it's gonna have Terminator in it. I'm assuming that's tying with the new film. Maybe, but it's, 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 it's gonna be Arnold Schwarzenegger as well. Yeah. It's the T-800. Oh, it's gonna be great. And do you know people are annoyed about that? People are like, oh, what's with all these stupid guest characters in my Mortal Kombat game? Ugh, bring back Reptile. 
Oh, and I, always, I can't imagine how boring your life must be if you see, oh, they're going to put the Terminator in Mortal Kombat and let you beat it up. And people are like, oh, but I want to play as another ninja. Ugh. Oh, they're putting Nightwolf in the game. Ugh. <laughs> Why? Where's Reptile? So, oh, I love Reptile. I don't give a The T-800. I love it. And then apparently the rumour was going to be they were going to put Pennywise in it. Oh, but there's a, a like, apparently a deal fell through at the last minute and now it might be the Joker, which is less fun. But Pennywise was going to be in that game and I'm so salt that he's not because the, we could have Pennywise versus the fucking Terminator, which would have been awesome. Like, I want them to put all the guest characters they've ever done into its own game. So I want the Terminator to fight the Predator with backup from Freddy Krueger with like Leatherface in the background. Since we're talking about Mortal Kombat today, um, Mortal Kombat was famous for like, basically dominating arcades back in the day. Because it, um, there's a thing, have you ever heard about the loudness war between um, arcade cabinets back in the day? So basically, back then, arcades were fucking loud. So if you wanted your game to stand, your new game to stand out, just make it louder than everybody else. And Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2 were um, famous, or infamous, I should say, for like, having the loudest cabinet going. Apparently, to compete with that, the, the Street Fighter, the movie, the video game, had an arcade release that every time you put a quarter in or a coin, it would just go, I am not kidding. You could put it in. I think it was like the, the best friends played it, and they, and they just keep mashing the button as hard as they can. It's every time you put a coin in, it just goes, and just makes like this weird like sex thrust noise for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the fucking coin sound. Oh, yeah. Keep putting coins in. Don't stop. Supposedly to compete with Mortal Kombat. Because, like, nothing's louder than Mortal Kombat. That thing was so loud. That was like an, a jetliner taking off in your earlobes, man. <laughs> so, Lucas, would you like to explain to the lovely people at home what we're talking about today? We are talking about, you know, the Ice Ninja Sub-Zero. Yes, and we will be referring mainly to the Sub-Zero wiki on the Mortal Kombat wiki. Oh, okay, Which cool. exists and is awesome. And even more specifically, we'll be referring to Kwai Liang, who is the second Sub-Zero canonically in the games, and I believe the third one in terms of his lineage. It's already bullshit. Yeah, because people might not know, yeah, there's multiple Sub-Zeros, including one in the past, who is the original Sub-Zero's granddad. What? And the Sub-Zero in the games now is the brother of the original Sub-Zero who died and became Noob Sabot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, like Mortal Kombat lore, like, I think the quote is, come for the gore, stay for the lore. <laughs> so you know what, Lucas? Let's jump into the lore right now, shall we? So we've got Sub-Zero, general information. Real name, Kwai Liang. Gender, male. Origin, Earth Realm, specifically China. Resides in Earth Realm and his species is a human slash cryomancer. Which to me is the coolest shit ever because it means he has control over ice. I mean, it's literally the coolest shit ever. So fighting styles, Shotokan and Dragon. I want to fight just, like I, a dragon. I thought it was always just ninjutsu because obviously he's a ninja. But actually, no, they're not. Have you ever heard that? In one of the introductions in like Mortal Kombat 11, it's like, oh, cool, you're a ninja. And Mortal Kombat was, the Lin Kuei are not ninjas. <laughs> and he gets really mad about it. And so, says, so why do you dress like them? It's yeah, like, we're not ninjas, but we dress like them. Why are there a dozen characters all dressed like ninjas that apparently aren't ninjas? No, like Sub Zero is not a ninja. So and then we have like the games has appeared in, which I think is almost every single one. I would hope so. It's almost every single one, bar like one or two. Well, he's like one of the two mascots for we, the series. But he's not Ed Boon's favourite. That um, honour belongs to Scorpion. Oh, fuck Scorpion. Which is why Scott, like, I think it's Mortal Kombat 9, where on the character select screen you press start and just Sub Zero gets wrecked. Sub-Zero getting wrecked on the start screen. So should we start with just a basic summary of who Kwai Liang is? It already sounds like it's not going to be very basic, Carl. <laughs> so here's a quote from him, which is, like, you know, his 2011 battle quote, which is, this fight will be your last. Oh, that's cool. Like, he has some of the greatest quotes in the series. Yeah. Uh, my favourite one being where it's like, oh, I don't know who he's talking to. It's the person who, like, kills Scorpion in the story. But then okay. Scorpion comes back and it's like, you killed Scorpion. And they go, but he is your enemy. And Sub-Zero like, crushes his like, ice in time. He goes, he was my equal. He's like, oh, it's so <laughs> yes. fucking cool. It's like, the then he knows. Is, it's like Mortal Kombat is the perfect setup for quotes like that because you're literally fighting to the death. Yeah. But I just love the idea as well. That, like, Sub-Zero is like, I hate him, but he's my equal. Yeah. And I think they even have an intro and they're fighting each other. It's like, one more round, Scorpion. It's like, yeah, go on, man, why not? <laughs> he's like his Goku. He's yeah, like, they, he pushes him further. They have that Goku and Vegeta moment of like, we know we're going to keep fighting, so fuck it one more. So, Kwai Liang, uh, which literally means quick cooling in Chinese. 
<laughs> of course it does. Uh, better known as Sub Zero, uh, which in chat, uh, which in his original language is Absolute Zero. Uh, he's a grandmaster of the Lin Kuei, formerly known as Tundra, and briefly as the Cyborg LK520. Very briefly. When he was, like, you know, Cyber Zero. Um, he's a Lin Kuei assassin in the Mortal Kombat fighting series. He is the younger brother of Bi Han, who was the original Sub Zero in the first Mortal Kombat game. I like the fact that his name is literally Cooling, but he wasn't the Sub Zero. <laughs> no, he was Tundra originally. Yeah. Tundra, which is so late, which I think was the original name they're going to give him until they realised Sub Zero sounds so much cooler. So, about Sub Zero. There are, in fact, two incarnations of Sub Zero, and they are siblings. Older brother Bi Han and younger brother Kwai Liang, who we're talking about today. Both are Blue Guard warriors who at different times have used the code name Sub Zero and both serve the Lin Kuei. God damn, I love this series. It's so yeah. dumb. Both are descended from cryomancers, an outworld race possessing the ability to generate and control the powers of ice. However, they were both born in Earthrealm, and only the younger Sub Zero would discover his heritage. Kwai Liang bears a scar on his right eye, which he received between the events of Mortal Kombat 3 in the new timeline. The scar was made by Kano, as revealed in one of the comic books. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, though, um, Kano would go for the eye. Yeah, he's, he so, would, yeah. he's so salt about losing his own eye. Then he gets a cool robot eye that fires lasers. So if anything, he's actually better now he's, he's lost got his an eye. Upgrade, yeah. He's so much cooler. So Bihan appeared as Sub Zero in the first Mortal Kombat game, while Kwai Liang went by the code name Tundra after Bihan was murdered by Scorpion <laughs> during the first tournament. Kwai Liang swore vengeance on him. He mastered the art of ice and cold and took his brother's former code name. I love that. It's like he swore vengeance, but was also pissed off when Scorpion died. Yeah, and I think if you make Noob Cybot, who is like you know Sub Zero's brother, fight Sub Zero in Mortal Kombat 11, just like Noob, he's just like he delivers the most brutal verbal beatdowns and tells him like, you are not worthy of our grandfather's oh, code name. No. <laughs> and Sub Zero's like, I'll beat the shit, I'll prove I can. It's so rough. It's so oh, bad. Just dunk it on his brother. Yeah, he know. even says stuff like, "Oh, I'm glad that you're dead" and shit like that. So oh, it's holy shit. Uh, that is a sibling rivalry for the ages. So uh, appearance, I think we all know this one, but uh, you know, maybe there's something in here we're not familiar with. So Sub Zero dresses in the familiar blue garb ninja-like uniform. Originally, Sub Zero was depicted with Asian fe facial features that are revealed in the ending when unmasked due to his Chinese American heritage. And have you heard about that? Where it's uh, the voice actor for a lot of the actors in Mortal Kombat 11 was changed to represent where the character is supposed to be from. So okay. they got like an Asian guy to play Scorpion. But for Sub Zero, because Steve Bloom's so good, they just kept him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, did you see that they did like a, a special event skin um, for Sub Zero, where it's like some rapper or something? Oh no. And they got him to do some voiceovers for it, but he clearly recorded them like in a toilet or something. And the voiceovers are so bad, and someone just uploaded, just, here's what happens when you make original Sub Zero fight this shit guy. And the voice is just so bad. <laughs> Interestingly, Sub Zero is one of the few characters in the series to show signs of natural aging, faster than anyone due to the dragon medallion. So, did you know about that? No. So, the medallion that he wears, that gives him, like, you know, enhances his ice powers. It robs him of his, his youth. I'd take that trade. Yeah. I'm now, like, 500 times more powerful, but I'm a bit older. Yeah. But I look really cool because I've got. Because he doesn't even get older in, like, a bad way. He gets, like, the little Mr. Fantastic, like, grey there. <laughs> And then like yeah. the little crow's feet, but because obviously he's got pierced, he's got the most literal piercing blue eyes ever. Because obviously they're just ice eyes now. <laughs> yeah. So it just makes him look even hotter. Right, so we've got combat characteristics here and there's a subheading called signature moves. So we just go straight to that. I think we need to head straight there, Carl. And what do you think is the first thing listed here for signature moves? And I think it's probably one of the most iconic moves in all of fighting games. Like behind maybe Scorpion's like get over here, the spear. Behind like the Hadouken as well. Yeah, I think it's up there with it. Is it the ice slide? No, it's the ice blast. Oh, the, the ice blast, okay, them. yeah. Because I love that, because I remember in the very original arcade game, they put it in because they loved the idea of giving someone a free hit. Mm -hmm. And they wanted, obviously, Scorpion and Sub-Zero being the poster boys to both have like, something similar. So Scorpion gets the spear to give you a free ah, hit, right, and then yeah. Sub-Zero gets the ice blast. So Sub-Zero sends a blast of ice directly towards the opponent to temporarily freeze them in place for a free hit. You can also freeze opponents in mid-air. Yeah, I love that, that. That's the craziest shit ever, that isn't it? And when I, they're like tucked up in a ball in the air and just... I always wonder why they didn't do like an aesthetic change in like the later games where it frees them and put like a pillar like rooting to the floor. I think it just looks so much better when they're <laughs> a dumb <laughs> ball of ice stuck in the air. So he's, actually, he's also controlling gravity, but yeah. whatever. So if Sub-Zero were to freeze the opponent twice, the second ice ball would defrost the opponent and freeze Sub-Zero, setting him up for a free hit. I did not know that. In one of the earlier games it did that, yes. I mean, that's a very clever mechanic. And I think in later games, it just defrosts them and does a little bit of damage. So it yeah. seems like an insult thing. 
if you freeze them and just launch another ice, like, because it goes so fucking slow. Uh, in MK11, there is an enhanced version called the Ice Beam, where instead of a single ball of ice, Sub Zero shoots a beam of ice. Oh man, so that's he shoots, cool. he shoots a Kamehameha yeah. wave of ice. In MKX, the enhanced version is called the Ice Blast and activates faster and is much larger, faster moving projectile rather than a beam. It also has the ability to destroy enemy projectiles on hit. Yeah. Yeah. Equipping Deep Freeze in one of the games allows the attack to be amplified and alters its effects. This ability requires two slots when equipped in MK11. Amplifying this attack now has Sub-Zero send a fast moving ice block and strike ducking opponents. So you can't even duck below it. So, it's just listening to you read that though, I'm like, when the fuck did Mortal Kombat come on an RPG? Like, oh man, yeah. The variation system is super fucking awesome. Because it's I like, have my one for Shao Kahn, which is called Beef. Oh. And then I've got yeah. another one called Big Beef, which is where he hits even harder. And all it is is all the hammer attacks. Yeah. The second move listed is the one you said that I slide, which I think is one of my favourite moves because like that thing was so fast in the early days. Yeah. And no one could stop it. Because like the entire other side of the screen sent out a spear. Now whoop! <laughs> I think that's why when you asked what the most iconic, that's the one I dicked about with the most. Because it's so fast. And yeah. It's almost like no one knows what to do against it when you just just start playing. And it just looks so stupid when you spam it. And he's just. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because all the way across the screen. So the slide, Sub Zero slides across the floor, knocking the opponent off their feet. Assume that Sub Zero slides by freezing the soles of his feet. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. They don't know why he's doing it, but he just freezes the soles of his feet. Yeah. Do you know what he's really got? He's got those um, Sonic sleigh shoes. Do you know those ones that the ones that you slide down rails on? Oh, and the actually, soap shoes. They, yeah, I yeah. bet he's just wearing them in it. So uh, the next move is the ground ice, which is one where they just like slip on it like a jackass, <laughs> and every character gets that animation. <laughs> <laughs> Which I fucking adore. We've got the Ice Clone. And I fucking love the Ice Clone. Because in one of the games, they gave him the ability to just throw it. Oh yeah. <laughs> he just throws it at him. It's so fucking good. And have you seen the thing he does like mid-round in the later games where he like freezes the clone and walks off screen. And then when you stand back up, he walks back on and just punches it. <laughs> For no reason other than like, fuck you. I'm Sub-Zero. The intimidation tactic. Oh man, it's so good. Got the Ice Counter. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, what's this? The Ice Nugget. Ice Nugget. Oh, sorry. It was. Oh, sorry. It was in uh, MK versus DC. Oh, so that's that's why no one gives yeah, a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> the Ice Burst, the Frost Hammer, the Air Frost Hammer, the Polar Puncture, the Barrier of Frost, the Frozen Aura, the Ice Burst, the Frost Bomb, the Icy Slide, the Cold Shoulder. Oh, I like the name of that one. Oh, like yeah. you know, the people naming these moves come up with some fucking pun. Creeping Ice, Rising Ice, Frigid Storm, Death Circle Barrage. You know, doing his emo phase, the Polar Axe, the Arctic Trap, Deep Freeze and chill out, which is his fatal blow. Which is where the one where he sticks the axes in them, but I fucking love oh, it. Okay. I love that they're all named after ice. Yeah. And like, then you just have, for DC, it's just ice nugget. Ice just nugget. a little nugget of ice. <laughs> like, oh God, that's so fucking lame. So as per usual, Lucas, should we end on the trivia section? Yes, we shall. Okay, so Sub-Zero makes a cameo appearance in Injustice Gods Among Us, and is a playable guest character in Injustice 2. Yes, he is, yes. Yeah. And Joe, you know what I love about that? Because Spawn got released, I think, yesterday. Oh, for, did he? For Mortal okay. Kombat 11, and during one of their character's interactions, like Spawn asks Sub-Zero, have you ever been to another dimension? To which Sub-Zero responds, I've seen many injustices. And, <laughs> and Spawn responds, maybe that's why my soul still burns. Oh, Very obviously references to Injustice 2 and Soul Calibur, in which both those characters made appearances. That's but really all cool. the comments are like, I'm not sure if people missed it, but this line is a reference to Injustice. <laughs> like, we fucking know we're watching a compilation of Spawn quotes. And it's like, it was so on the nose. They put the title Injustice in his quote. Yeah. So. But people are watching it going, oh my God, he referenced Soul Calibur. It's like, of course. Ah, ah. And the fact that people think that I noticed it and no one else did. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so we've got, during Sub-Zero's Mortal Kombat 2011 ending, a warrior in shadow can be seen performing the infamous spine rip fatality on another warrior. This is likely depicting Scorpion's death by the original Sub-Zero. <laughs> I love that shit. Or maybe it's just something the Link Way teach people. And that's why no fucking mess with the Link Way. That's are their signature move. Well, they are assassins. And that's I would true. fear a group of assassins. So what do they do? Do they like poison you? Do they stab you in the night? No, they walk up, freeze you in place, and then you get to see them just rip your spine out of his body. And then if it's Sub-Zero, if they call in Sub-Zero himself, he'll punch your skull and your eyeball will fly out. <laughs> in an episode of Malcolm in the Middle, Reese mentions the fact that nobody believes that he beat the last level of Mortal Kombat, to which Hal responds, do you remember this quote? It's one of my favourites in that series. Isn't it just like, nobody beats Sub-Zero? It is, yeah. That's just ridiculous. No one beats Sub-Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so Ed Boon has stated that Sub-Zero was originally going to be called Tundra, which canonically was Sub-Zero's original codename. 
And he obviously took it to honour his fallen brother before his brother's like, you do not deserve my yeah. name! In his MK versus DC ending, oh, let's have a look at this one then, can we? He becomes Earthrealm's version of Batman. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> what? That's, a, that's a great version of Batman! That's so good! That's so much scarier than Batman. <laughs> Batman, but he can freeze you in place and rip your spine out. Instead of flying everywhere, he just slides in a crouched position. To end on, here's like quite a neat little Easter egg that, you know, is very obvious to fans of the game, but people think, <gasps> Oh my god, I can't believe they did that. In Mortal Kombat 11, when interacting with Raiden, Raiden discusses a dream he had, which Sub-Zero will reply with, of a Dark Knight and a Caped Wonder. This is a reference to both the DC fighting game Injustice, developed by Neverland Studios, and Sub-Zero and Raiden's inclusion in them as playable guest characters. Okay. But people are like, oh my god, a Dark Knight and a Kate Wonder. Did you know that's Superman and Batman? <laughs> I bet you didn't. I bet you didn't know. I noticed that. Did you? So, oh my god. It's a further reference in an interaction with Cetrion, which Cetrion states to Sub-Zero that his dream of going there was no dream, hinting at the possibility that both Raiden and Sub-Zero actually went into the Injustice universe. <laughs> <laughs> They're both, everything's canon in Mortal Kombat, motherfuckers. As per usual, Lucas, would you like to let the lovely people at home know what today's video is about? Well, today, we are talking about Sub-Zero's, like, counterpart. His nemesis. Of course, Scorpion. Yes, and we'll be referring mostly to, once again, the Mortal Kombat wiki, specifically the page titled Scorpion. And we'll start, as we often do at the beginning, and just cover some general information about one Mr. Scorpion. Because his name isn't Mr. Scorpion. <laughs> as much as I'd love it to be, his actual name is Hanzo Hashashi. Okay. Yeah. Which I think they introduced like in one of the games, they're like, no, he's Scorpion. It is easier to say. Like, <laughs> Scorpion's his code name. It's like, no, nah, man, I'm Hanzo Hashashi. And I think they, in the later games, they keep trying to go, no, he hates being Scorpion. Oh, God. He doesn't like being a Revenant. He doesn't like being a cool skeleton warrior. It's like, no, you fucking Scorpion, deal with it. You're so cool. So he's a male. He's from Earth Realm, specifically in Japan, but he was reborn in the Nether Realm when he became, you know, cool. Yeah. <laughs> when he became like super awesome and rad. When he um, abandoned the name Hanzo. Yeah, so he's a species, he is a spectre and a human. And in the present, he's a human, but he's also a spectre in the past. Okay. Just don't worry about it. Like, I guess, like, Mortal Kombat's lore is just a nightmare <laughs> to try and traverse because every single game is canon. And they're just constantly rebooting themselves and it's no wonder they with each yeah. other's timelines. No wonder oh. they like teaming up with DC. <laughs> His fighting styles, oh god, no. I accidentally clicked on just the word that says Mortal Kombat and it opened oh, up no. a four like million <laughs> word thing. So we got fighting styles, Hapkido, Pigua, and Moifa. Did you ever hear about that game that was going to be made then got shit canned that Ed Boon keeps teasing people about? No. Like, do you know they had like Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, which is Liu Kang and Kung Lao? Yeah. And it's like a side scrolling beat em up with fatalities, that's super cool. Yeah, yeah. There was a like a rumoured sequel called Mortal Kombat Fire and Ice which is going to be Sub-Zero oh, and Scorpion yeah. teaming up and it'd be a two-player like adventure game where you walk around as those two characters and kick shit out of everything and it got cancelled and every couple of months like Ed Boon goes, huh, maybe we should do something with that and then never does anything. Because <laughs> that would be a g I will play through that game right fucking now. Yep. Like, just so we could go through the game as Sub-Zero and Scorpion and hear all the quippy one-liners. The thing is though, Carl, how would we decide who gets to play as Sub-Zero? I Sub Zero is my favourite, but I don't mind Scorpion. Hanzo Hasashi, better known as Scorpion, which in Japanese literally translates to, you will not believe it's Lucas, full Scorpion Man. <laughs> His name. I'm not full Scorpion Man. The foresight his parents had <laughs> to name him full Scorpion Man. Oh, God. I think that's, no, that's what Scorpion is translated to in Japanese. So his name doesn't mean full Scorpion Man, but Scorpion's like name in Japanese is just full Scorpion oh, Man. Oh, okay. Huh. He's a resurrected ninja in the Mortal Kombat fighting game series, as well as a mascot of the games. He's one of the very few original characters to debut in Mortal Kombat arcade game. He holds the distinction, along with Raiden and Sub-Zero, in one form or another, of appearing in every generation Mortal Kombat game as a playable character. Oh, so it's him, Raiden, and then Sub-Zero doesn't count because he died in the first game, as we discussed last week. I still think it counts. It's the same fucking character. About Scorpion. It is known that his father, a former member of, and do you know the like band of assassins that Scorpion works with? What's the name of his clan? I'm not sure. It's the Shira Ryu, which is oh. fucking awesome, forbade his son from joining the clan as he did not wish for his son to live the life of an assassin. However, he joined anyway, in spite of his father's wishes, um, in order to provide for his wife and son. I mean, that's a good reason. Yeah, also as well, I love that like Scorpion, he seems like an evil villain. 
but like his backstory is my wife and child were murdered. Like, he's basically Kratos. I was going to say, does he not murder his family in the style of Kratos? No. Like, they're killed and he swears vengeance and becomes a spectre willingly to have the power to like, you know, avenge them. So he's basically Kratos, but better written. <laughs> and it's really weird to think like, yeah, Mortal Kombat games are better written, but whatever. So now Scorpion is a hell spawn spectre inexorably seeking vengeance against those responsible for the destruction of his clan and the death of his family. Despite his malevolent appearance, he is not inherently evil. He only joins the force of evil when promised a means of resurrecting his clan on earth or the chance to inflict his wrath against those who butchered them. So Me basically, yeah, he works for his own ends. Yeah. Like, he is the atypical, just like, anti-hero. Because... Just, I want vengeance and I will get it in any way. I fucking well please. Yeah, I I'm not inherently bad or evil, but if you get in my way, I will keep the shit out of you. Yep. I, I just want to murder people who are responsible <laughs> for the destruction of my clan. And then, I have to mention this, in Mortal Kombat 11, you encounter him, and in that vein, he goes, well, I don't want to fight you. Like, you're not oh, yeah. part of my, like, you know, vengeance quest, so I'm going to leave. But the reason I want you to put the clip in is because when he teleports away, he dabs. Because what he does is he like, activates a spell to teleport away, but he just goes, <laughs> and then, like, flames away, and he does this, like, scoff. He's like, peace out, motherfuckers. Boom! <laughs> So I remember watching the story mode and that came up and obviously they didn't know. Yeah. It looked like a dab, but it does and I just lost it. Scorpion appears human when masked, though it is merely an illusion. Only his skull remains when he's his true form, sometimes ablaze. I love that. Just becomes Ghost Rider. Oh, he's so fucking cool, man. She's just a flaming skull. He's yep. literally just an Ed Hardy tattoo come to life. Oh. Appearance. Scorpion appears with a traditional palette swap look and that the other ninjas had. He kept his appearance for the first four Mortal Kombat games after which he started to wear two swords on his back and a kunai attached to a rope on his belt. They learned that eventually they had to, like, differentiate these pallet swaps. Also, how long did it take you to realise the reason he's called Scorpion is because he's got, like, you know, the spear on a rope, which is the scorpion sting? It was definitely a while. Yeah, and then when he starts to get the swords on his back, they hook over to look like the pincers of a scorpion. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you, well, how long, how old, because I was today years old when I realised that, cause it's just written here. I mean, I didn't know about the sword. <laughs> yeah. Like, the rope and the spear, I think I found out maybe, like, when Mortal Kombat 9 came out or something it's like, like oh, that. yeah, it's the Scorpion Stinger. Yeah. And it always made me weird, like, they never had, like, a variation where it poisons you. Do they not even in, like, the new games where you have the different variations? No, it's always just fire that he puts on his She would have thought the first thing they put in is, like, yeah, the... The, like, poisonous scorpion version. No, I, I would have thought they'd done Anyway, so Scorpion's yellow costume is said to have mocked not only Sub-Zero, but also the Lin Kuei. Oh, so that's why he has that palette swap. Yeah, so the Shirara you do not actually dress like that, but as a fuck you to Sub-Zero, he started wearing an outfit that looks exactly like him, <laughs> just to take the piss. So basically, I'm going to wear your outfit and then kill you. Yep. I'm going to whoop you with your own face, deal with it. So we've got combat characteristics here. So would you like to, as we did last time, just skip straight to iconic moves? And go oh, of course, moves? Yeah. People don't, like, there's obviously a few famous ones, but because he's been in like, what, 15 fucking games? They keep giving him new ones that they just really quietly push away. Like, and oh, even the list of special moves is ridiculously long. Yes, even though in most games they would have like four or five, but because they keep trying to revamp them. So, signature moves. Do you want to guess what the top of this list is? Well, it's got to be get over here! Yeah, the spear. Sending out a rope or metal chain tipped with a kunai at the end. It impales itself into the victim's chest, allowing Scorpion to pull him or her through the air towards him for a free hit, as well as causing a small bit of damage. This move often follows the words, get over here or come here. In MK11, the enhanced version is called Flame Spear, and he launches two at the same time. Oh, of course he does. Yeah. Those famous, like, you know, dual, like, stingered scorpions. See, I always just preferred the enhanced version where instead of pulling them and giving them a punch, he just pulls them forward and they're left stunned right in front of you. Yeah, because I think what they did is they realised, like, the stun is too powerful, so the, reg the regular version, he just knocks them out, and then the enhanced version gives you the free hit. Yeah. So you can get a full combo off it. Uh, the second um, uh, scene to move guys is the Hellfire Punch, which is his teleport. Yeah. Which I love because um, when you figured out how to do that in the earlier games, if you're playing against people who don't really understand fighting games, they don't know what to do against it. Which is like, oh, how am I supposed to fight you if you can just teleport and punch me? Because get good. And then he says they've got enhanced versions, which is called the Flame Port, which adds a flaming uppercut. <laughs> and you can also cancel it in one of the games, which was ridiculous. You ever see that? Oh my god. Where no. you can cancel it and you can use it to like run forward completely armored oh, no. and just like go through everything. It's crazy. So then he's got his leg takedown, which I love because it's so dumb. Yeah. It's like because all the other moves in the game are so violent, then you just have this one where you just trips him up. <laughs> just goes to the ankles. Like, uh! like tripping is the lowest form of combat, and the scorpion just like he loves that shit. 
As per usual, would you like to end on the trivia section, my friend? As always. Okay, so Scorpion's name, Hanzo Hasashi, may be a possible reference to Hanzo Hattori, a famous samurai and ninja during the Japanese Sengoku period. Oh, that's cool. Well, it, it probably is. Scorpion's spear is going to a special projectile which has not been reflected by reflex skills. So it's unique in a way, because it's, it's, it's technically a grab, technically a projectile. It's like how cool would that be if you could reflect it back and then get over here on Scorpion himself? Or do that thing that Johnny Cage does in the live action movie where he runs away from it. <laughs> Just a lot, no one ever thinks that, it's run away from the spear. So Scorpion's get over here and come here spear taunts in all Mortal Kombat games and movies were voiced by MK co-creator Ed Boon himself. Really? Yeah, Ed Boon does the voice for all of them. Like, not the voice actor for nope. Scorpion? Even when they get new voice actors in, they uh, they either reuse that original voice clip or got Ed Boon to re-record it. <laughs> okay, I never knew that. Yeah. That's um, cool. During an interview, um, Boon was asked why Scorpion shouts, get over here, when performing his spear move. He replied that he thinks it's just comical for the tough guy Hellspawn to say something as random as that. <laughs> After defeating Scorpion and Shaolin Monks, he gets dragged into the lava by skeletons. Um, as his arm goes in, he gives the player a thumbs up, a reference to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. In various interviews, Ed Boon has openly admitted that his favourite character is Scorpion. No I'm shit. I'm not surprised, yeah. <laughs> no fucking... He's on the front of every box. Uh, so it says here that Scorpion's name is mentioned in Injustice 2 by Sub-Zero during an interaction with Robin, similar to how Sub-Zero is referenced in Injustice 1, in which like, Scorpion makes appearance. It also says here that um, one of Sub-Zero's headpieces has Shira Ryu in the name, referencing the clan's past rivalry, which means that <laughs> Sub-Zero is wearing Scorpion's armor yep. as a fist. And I love that shit, it's so good. It's like, yeah, you, you ripped off the, um, the Lin Kuei armor. How about I rip off your <laughs> mask, dickhead? <laughs> I've always been surprised though that Sub-Zero never like, came up with an ice version of the spear as a piss take. Oh yeah. I've never actually thought of that. Like using the thing, but no, maybe we'd see that if they ever made them team up in a video game. Maybe. Cause like, can you imagine though, if they teamed up? The fuck would you do? How would you stop Scorpion and Sub-Zero at the same time? So far away, Lucas, as you often do, is like to let the lovely audience at home know specifically what we're talking about today in more detail. Yeah, as I mentioned in the intro, we're talking about like the ruler of the outworld. Just Shao. the man himself. Shao fucking Khan. M one of my favourite Mortal Kombat characters. And we're referring today to the Mortal Kombat wiki, a link to which you can find below. But without further ado, Shao Kahn. So here we go. So general information about Shao Kahn. Gender, male, and fucking then some. <laughs> uh, that is 100% man right there, isn't it? Uh, when you are rocking up to the battlefield, like all nine foot of you, half a ton, and you're carrying a war hammer the size of a fucking toddler. <laughs> That's just pure man. Uh, origin, Outworld. Resides, Outworld. Species, Immortal. What? Yeah. Like, Shao what Kahn species? is immortal. Like, Shao Kahn's like <laughs> 2,000 years old. It's just and weird he... that it's listed as species, immortal. Fuck it. Yeah. He's like 2,500 years old or something like that. He's been ruling Outworld for that long. Um, weapons, spear, wrath hammer, staff, and sword. Fighting styles... I don't think he needs a fight style. His fight style is fuck you. That's what it is. His fight style is just fuck you, you didn't win. Yep. And then games, almost every single game in the Mortal Kombat um, uh, franchise. I fucking hope so. Yeah, and we'll go. We'll start with, as we often do, a quote from Shao Kahn himself. And that is, all realms will tremble before me. Outworld will again be conquerors. Never the conquered. And Lucas, thoughts on Shao Kahn. I mean, that's a great quote, but at the same time, he doesn't stop getting his ass kicked. No, he is, like, he is up there with Baraka as just the jobber of the MK universe. Yeah. I, I think Baraka, Reptile, and Shao Kahn are just, like, the ultimo jobbers of Mortal Kombat because they always get their ass kicked. Like, that's yeah. the thing is, he looks incredible and just as a fighter seems really cool, but... In the story, he just constantly fails over and over again. Yeah, he gets beaten up by a fucking monk using his bare hands. Yeah. That's a guy who's been undefeated for a thousand fucking years, gets his ass handed to him. And, uh, Mortal Kombat 11 is the game, I think, the first game where he's properly playable. He's like a character, and he's like a super boss character, and he is mm -hmm. consistently been rated the worst character in that game. And Lucas, you know how I play video games. Do you want to guess who I main in Mortal Kombat 11? 
No, I'm guessing it's Shao Kahn. It's Shao Kahn. It's awful. He gets, I, I can't beat anybody with him. He sucks. But here we go. Shao Kahn is a character in the Mortal Kombat fighting game series. A powerful tyrant of the Outworld throne. He is one of the most celebrated villains in not only the fighting game genre, but the video game genre as a whole. He serves as the primary antagonist of the franchise in many instances. I do like, though, one of the missions, I think, in the new expansion is you play as Shao Kahn as Sindel, and it's just called, like, Power Couple. <laughs> it's like, just, like, one of, like, the twists I like in that is uh, the character Sindel. If people don't know Mortal Kombat, it's like, oh, was the queen of another realm that Shao Kahn conquered, and then he made her his queen? Oh, and it's okay. like, oh, no. Like, that must be really sad for her, and then she dies. And then you go and revive her, and she gets woken back up and was like, no, I like being evil, it's great. <laughs> it's like, I, I love Shao Kahn, he's awesome. I fucking just love getting on that nine foot tall Dragon D. Anyway, Shao Kahn made his debut appearance in Mortal Kombat 2 as the final boss, a role he served in Mortal Kombat 3 and in later games. He returned in Mortal Kombat 11 as a pre-order bonus character. Oh yeah, because it's Warner Bros, isn't it? Is there any publisher who puts out games that are more just like, I'm going to buy the Ultimate Edition? Oh Warner god, Bros. yeah. The moment I uh, played Mortal Kombat 9, it's like, well... I'm never going to buy one of these games at launch again. <laughs> yeah. And if people are wondering what we're talking about in regards to that, uh, Mortal Kombat 11 has a grand total of about like 15 fucking DLC characters. Mm-hmm. And there's an Ultimate Edition that you buy that just has them all in that was cheaper than the game was at launch. Yeah, and then you buy Injustice, um, the Ultimate Edition, and he goes, oh, you've got to play the mobile game to get these skins. It's like, yeah. oh! I will never forget when I bought the Ultimate in big quotation marks, version of Mortal Kombat X, which is quite funnily called Mortal Kombat XL, which I thought was quite clever. But yeah. like the front of the box says on it, includes all skins and characters released for the game. And I'm like, okay, cool. I've got the Ultimate Edition. It'd be great for when like people like Lucas comes around. We can play a bit mm -hmm. of Mortal Kombat and have a drink. The literal first thing I saw upon booting up the game is, to get the exclusive Cassie K Sub-Zero skin, play the mobile <laughs> game. It's like, what? <laughs> this is the first thing the game told me. Second one is give us more fucking money. Fuck you, Warner Bros. Shao Kahn appearance. Shao Kahn is one of the few non-ninja characters whose appearance has stayed consistent throughout the years. Now, that's true, that isn't it? Almost everyone else had like some kind of redesign. Yeah, true, and it, all it is is just they added a few more spikes to him. Yeah, made him taller as well. They also gave him, like, dragon skin, which I think is quite cool. Oh, that is a cool little detail. Like, then, when yeah. he takes his gauntlets and stuff off with some costumes, you can see that he has, like, scales instead of, like, normal skin. And he has, like, weird red eyes. It's great. I will uh, say, though, I do love just the original Shredder design. Yes, like... <laughs> Okay. Just legally distinct shredder. <laughs> just change the colour. Just like, tell me, copy your homework. It's like, yeah, just change it a little bit so we don't get sued. I will say that some of the redesigns in Mortal Kombat are fucking incredible. And, like, yeah, they the are. The redesign yeah. of Kitana, going yes. from just woman in skimpy blue leotard to actual, like, she, she has that air of regalness about her to, like, you know, be suggestive of the character that she is, is mm -hmm. fucking awesome. And it will never not be funny to read all those, like, salty like, screeds from weird men on the internet, like, decrying it of, like, oh, it's an affront to boner culture, which was an actual quote a guy said. Oh, no. To Ed Boon. It's like, why are you taking away my big titties in my video games? It's like, fuck you, dude. These characters are awesome. Powers and abilities. Um, Shao Kahn is shown to be immensely powerful throughout the series. He's able to utilize magic and has superhuman strength and durability. He's also able to charge at the opponent with considerable speed and power using his bullshit shoulder charge move. Isn't oh, that I the fuck? Like, that move. That oh. move that goes across the entire screen takes like a third of your health in one hit. I just remember him being the worst in like the 2011 reboot. He just, the moment you got back up, that shoulder charge is right back on top of you. And it's fucking incredible, isn't it? It is. He's, he's so fat. Like, he's a boss. You can see why he wins when he can do yeah. that. He's like uh, one of my favourite intros in the game. Is like um, Johnny Cage when he comes into the ring doing his shadow kick. And that's how he arrives. And I can only imagine that Shao Kahn enters the room using his shoulder charge. It just busting doors open. Just, it's like, how, yeah, that's why he's in charge. Armed with his wrath hammer, it's actually called that, Shao Kahn can set opponents flying with a single swing. During the events of Armageddon, he's able to smash through Melina's magic barrier with a single swing. Like Shang Tsung, he can absorb the souls of others to increase his power, often through the usage of 
and I fucking love this word, Solnados. <laughs> which are, in Mortal Kombat lore, Tornadoes of Souls. <laughs> Solnados. His ability to absorb souls is so potent he can rob the billions of souls of an entire realm with a single hand motion. The warrior souls he has taken also retain their memories and combat knowledge, making him wiser and deadlier in combat with every soul he imprisons within his body. What? How on earth has Johnny Cage ever landed a nut shot on him? <laughs> Do you know why? Because Johnny Cage is a fucking don. He wears sunglasses at night, Lucas. You can't stop him. Oh, and Lucas, man, just like... Shall fucking car, ladies and gentlemen. What do you have to say about any of that? Uh, all I have to say is that I'm pretty sure Carl made an edit of the character and just called him Big Daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, we've got now like, a list of moves here, which I, you know, like from every Mortal Kombat game. Do you have like a favourite Shao Kahn move? Because I will note that included in his moves is Ridicule, which is the you suck. Wait, is it just like Torn or something? Yeah, his taunt is officially listed as one of his moves. Oh, really? And it is just pointing at the opponent and telling them that they suck. He also has Humiliate, which is where he laughs. And it causes the opponent to do less damage. So he has the ability to just, like, knock your confidence so you do less damage. Yeah, and, and like, in Mortal low. Kombat 11, do you... I presume you get some cool fatalities and stuff with him as well. Oh, yeah, he, um, he hits their head so hard it flies out their ass. <laughs> That's his fatality. <laughs> He hits them in the head so hard with his hammer it flies out of their anus. Because he's fucking Shao Kahn. Also as well, I would like to point out that his fatal blow is called You Suck. And Lucas, I, as we often do, would you like to end on a little bit of trivia about the Emperor of our world? Hell fucking yeah. Okay, so trivia. Shao Kahn started out unmasked and with large gnashing teeth similar to Baraka the Jobber. Since everyone from Outworld was originally going to be of Baraka's race, the idea of all inhabitants of Outworld being Tarkatans was later dropped. That's oh. good, yeah. I, I prefer that because like, there's nothing more infuriating in like just fiction than worlds existing of a single race and just um, like biome. Like, hello, hello, Star Wars. Oh, what's this planet? It's all sand. What's oh, this, this one's here? the Wookiee planet. This is like, the Wookiee planet. Live oh, here. Only Wookiees live here and it's all trees. Wow, that's really fucking lazy. Like, in an outworld, what is it? No, it's a just like Earth, it's a collection of races and peoples, like, you know, living in, like, you know, relative harmony, at least mm -hmm. under the fucking boot heel of Shao Kahn. Shao Kahn's voice is an ever-present sound in the Mortal Kombat universe. Even when he isn't present, he can be heard in the form of an announcer, um, uttering phrases such as outstanding, well done, incredible, superb, and excellent. He also orders you to finish your opponent at the end of a match. So in every game, to the finish him, that's always Shao Kahn, unless you specifically change the announcer. Oh, I didn't realise you could ever change the answer, but that's good. Uh, you can in the new one, yeah, and you can make it Robocop. So my, mine's obviously just set as Robocop. <laughs> um, though Shao Kahn is initially shown to be well over 10,000 years old, Mortal Kombat Armageddon places have been even older. Oh, in Shinnok's ending in Mortal Kombat 4, he states that Raiden had him in prison for millions of years, which aligns with his fall from the Battle of Earth. His fall and the battle for Earth being the cause of the Cretaceous extinction that killed the dinosaurs. Wait, what? Shao Kahn killed the dinosaurs. Oh my god, no. Presumably by fucking just hitting the earth with his hammer really fucking hard. Killed the dinosaurs. <laughs> so, oh god. He killed them, Lucas. Like, like, he got so mad, he killed the dinosaurs. He just swung at them. Like, where's that game? Oh god. Where's that where, where is that fucking game of Shao Kahn wrath hammering the T-Rex? That's DLC I'll pay for, I'll tell you that. I, I would fucking pay for that. I want to see a T-Rex wielding the green energy. <laughs> Just fighting, like, shout. I want, like, Riptor. I want that. Where's that crossover? Fuck. I, I, there's more to it. I can't. I just can't handle that he killed the dinosaurs. <laughs> Fucking Shao Kahn. Like, as well, you know, with his warrior personality, he saw a dinosaur and was like, sick of like, a worthy opponent. Yeah, just cracked his knuckles and went, let's do this. Let's fucking do it. You know he beat it as well by hitting it with his bare hands. <laughs> what a fucking don. Oh, I just realised I've got the fact thing skeleton here. We could do like a a, like, a shitty um, uh, fatality thing out of like, ah! yes, you're gonna, you're oh, God, I've realised. the fatality on the skeleton. I realised I could just do this like the sub-zero of just like the head rip and just... And I was like, I'm like ripping out a tiny skeleton. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>
The Mortal Kombat series is home to a number of eminently recognisable characters, including a pantheon of actual gods, a dickhead movie star who glows green, and a Shaolin monk who teleports via Razor Hat. In regards to the latter, the series is also home to another monk who is differentiated, differenti differentiated <laughs> by his mullet, a mullet that the creators of the game made canon after the actor playing him refused to shave his head. So, Brad, you said you're not too familiar with Mortal Kombat, right? No, I, I played Tekken. I didn't play Mortal Kombat. Okay. Well, I would argue that the Mortal Kombat series has one of the most eclectic character casts of any fighting game. Because like you said you played Tekken. Yeah. And probably the crazy thing you get in Tekken is a bear who knows Mishima-style karate <laughs> and yeah, whatever the foot Yoshimitsu is, right? Yeah. <laughs> Here. There's like a devil in there somewhere, but like Mortal Kombat is home to gods, ninjas, people who look like ninjas but explicitly aren't ninjas because Sub-Zero, despite looking like a ninja, is not a ninja, which he will tell you in-game. Let's get something straight. I am not a ninja. I am Lin Kuei. Scorpion was a ninja. He even says like, the Lin Kuei are not ninjas. I'll put the clip in. Where's the ninja convention? Lin Kuei are not ninjas. So why dress like one? And we also have movie stars, um, uh, members of the military, um, the kid of a movie star and a member of the military because two of the characters end up dating and having a kid who has the same powers as the movie star, which is the ability to glow green, which he inherited from a Mayan death cult. That, that's canon to the story, by the way. You also have several members of like interdimensional races, including a half horseman, you have a half dragon, half shokan, which is a like a race of like four arm warrior monsters. You have um, uh, an actual cowboy from the 1800s who travelled to another dimension and becomes a bounty hunter. Not this fight again. You would prefer someone else. Hell, I'd fight a goddamn space cowboy. What do we have now? A blood mage who can teleport via the process of blood. Robocop, the Terminator, the alien, the predator. Freddy Krueger, Leatherface, and Jason from Friday the 13th are all in that game. Just, the question I have is how? Like, what's the law reason, or is there not one? Do you know why, Brad? Because Mortal Kombat. I, it's because, from what I'm aware, isn't it like a tournament, and they all come together to fight? Yes, Mortal Kombat, the titular Mortal Kombat is a tournament, and in the first game, um, it's noted that the interdimensional like um, warlord Shao Kahn has won nine tournaments in a row. And the law is that if you win 10 in a row, you get to merge the realms, which is what all the fighters of Earth realm, well, like your Liu Kang, who we're talking about today, your Johnny Cage, your Sub-Zero, your Scorpion, they're all fighting against. Okay. And then they've reset the timeline twice, I think, because they realize, holy shit, this is getting complicated. So is it like any fighter from any realm can come and compete in the Mortal Kombat? Yes, and almost everyone in the Mortal Kombat games has a nebulously defined amount of superpowers. <laughs> if you think like Johnny Cage, the actor, how is he going to fight a god? How is he going to fight like Onaga, the Dragon King? And it's like, yeah, he's got superpowers. We don't know how much he's got superpowers, but he's got fucking superpowers. Just enough superpowers to not get killed in one hit. Yeah, like that's the in-universe explanation for why like characters like Johnny Cage can get hit by Shao Kahn. It does make the gods seem less impressive when everybody can fight. Well, no, it's just that the humans can fight on par with the gods. <laughs> also, if you're a god, you can still get punched in the fucking balls. Yeah. That's the best bit about Johnny Cage, of like, it doesn't matter how tough you are. It doesn't matter how tough you are, Goro. I can still punch you in the fucking nads. Let's dance. Everyone's got a weak spot between the legs. They have, yeah. It's like the old package check and um, they work from everybody. And that's one of the things I love about Mortal Kombat. Like, there's so much love and care and craft put into like their universe about how stupid it is. Like, for example, the character of Sonya Blade, one of her signature moves is uh, the love dust, when she like blows dust into someone's eyes and it blinds the character for a few seconds, getting you a free hit. That doesn't work on the character of Kenshi because he's blind. <laughs> so that character is immune to that one specific attack and it's like... Yeah, that, that does make sense, as stupid as it is. So that character has like a really good matchup against Sonya because that move doesn't work. So just tell me the characters you're familiar with. Uh, so I'm familiar with the, the general roster. Like you've got the ninjas, uh, apparently not Sub-Zero, but um, Scorpion is Sub-Zero and then Reptile was the colour change because we've done a lot of videos talking about this before. 
a lot of the early history of Mortal Kombat was fueled by rampant speculation from fans. Like you mentioned Reptile, yeah. like his existence was hinted at by fans for years. Like, do you know there's a secret third green ninja? So they went, well, that sounds cool. Let's make a third green ninja who's got the powers of Scorpion and Sub-Zero combined. And that's what Reptile did in the first game. He had like Scorpion's um, uh, Spear and Sub-Zero's Freeze, I think. But then they made him his own character. The same way they had the character of Ermac, who was um, a rumoured character to exist. He was a red ninja, and it was the word Era Macro, Ermac. Right. And that character didn't exist, but Ed Boon, um, one of the creators of uh, Mortal Kombat, I thought it was interesting, so created that character. And similarly, you had the character of Scarlet, who was a rumoured female red ninja, who was like in power, had the powers of blood. And again, that character didn't exist, but they liked the idea of it, so they made Scarlet a real thing. And I love that just Mortal Kombat embraces the dumb stuff and the stuff from fans and the fan theories and makes them canon. And there's this great video called like 50 Quick Questions with Ed Boon. And you can see him, George Lucas in it live on camera, <laughs> where he's being asked questions about the lore of Mortal Kombat. And he's just answering them on the fly and making it canon right there and then. Do Johnny Cage's fans know that he's killed just like dozens and dozens of people at this point? No, he, he keeps that to himself. Are there other religions on Earth, or does everybody just worship the Elder Gods at this point? Does everybody know that they exist? No, not everybody knows they exist. Can you just officially make the call on which faction or clan won in Mortal Kombat X? Let's go with the Black Dragon. Really? Why is that? They probably cheat at the end of the day and end up winning. <laughs> when, I, when I described it as it was then and told you all the different characters that are in it, it sounds so stupid, but it really does fit. Like when I'm on the character select screen for Mortal Kombat 11 and I see like Aaron Black, who's an actual cowboy, kicking the fuck out of Robocop, my MS perfect sense. I don't question this at all. Yeah, of course Robocop's fighting this cowboy. <laughs> of course, like, you know, Scorpion's coming in for the assist. That makes perfect sense. It's Mortal Kombat. Like they get away with it just because they've always been willing to embrace how dumb the series is. But, like, you know, bring it back, you know, the characters that you're aware of, you mentioned, like the two ninjas. Um, uh, what about the human characters? What human characters are you aware of? But, uh, yeah, and then you mentioned Liu Kang earlier as well. Yes, um, and he's the one we're talking about today. Um, but Liu Kang um, uh, is like the partner character to uh, Kung Lao, and uh, they are both Shaolin monk style characters. And Kung Lao is the more traditional Shaolin monk. He has like the bald head. Um, he has like the way more respectful way of talking. Like he's very mysterious, very quiet. He has like you know, the robes, like the hat. I guess he's not very. Shaolin Monk-esque, especially when he's got like razor blades on it, but if you take off the hat, he looks like what you'd expect a traditional monk character, quote-unquote, to look like, yes? But you look at Liu Kang, what do you see when you look at Liu Kang? Uh, well, the long hair stands out. And, and those luscious locks of Liu Kang is what we're talking about today, because Joy said like, Mortal Kombat's not afraid to make dumb stuff canon. Yeah. That's kind of what happened here, so do you know like the early Mortal Kombat games was done with digitized actors? Yeah, they got the actual actors in to pause for the particular move sets and then yes. use those in the games. And we could talk about that all day because there's a bunch of like interesting like factoids and stuff about that, such as like a, a, a big argument about rights because they changed the actor for a couple of the characters like in between games because the actors weren't getting paid properly. And there's a whole bunch of like you know legal nonsense that went on there. But in particular, we're talking about one actor today, and that's the actor who played Liu Kang. Ho Sung Pak. So obviously to do this, they would have all had to dress up in the characters' costumes. Yes, and there was like some stuff that was achieved via special effects, like the character of Goro was not played by a person. That was like a <laughs> toy they made that they just like literally moved around with their hands and dragged and dropped them onto the screen. And they like the special moves they were like, you know, added in after the fact. But for the most part, um, everything you see in those early Mortal Kombat games was just the actors wearing costumes. And like, as you mentioned, there's some great behind the scenes stuff. And that's what made the game so iconic and in some circles so infamous because it's real people, like, you know, real quote unquote people being yeah. violently murdered on screen. And uh, because you didn't play the first game, you probably aren't aware of the fact that there's only one character in that base roster of seven people who couldn't kill anybody. And that character was Liu Kang. So one of the roster didn't actually have a fatality. Like, he did have a fatality, but when you input the buttons for it, you just uppercutted the opponent. So he was the only one in that base game that didn't have a fatality that explicitly killed his opponent. <laughs> Liu Kang wins. Flawless victory. Fatality. Which makes sense. However, the character of Liu Kang didn't exactly conform to the stereotypical look of a Shaolin monk. Like, you know, he had some of like, you know, the traditional garb you'd associate with it, but he had you know, that power metal mullet. 
And that's because the actor who played him, Ho Sung Pak, just absolutely steadfastly refused to shave his hair. And according to um, uh, one of the co-creators of Mortal Kombat, John Tobias, when he came in and I told him, look, you're gonna be playing Liu Kang, here's, here's the character you're gonna play, he's a Shaolin monk, uh, we're gonna need you to shave your head, obviously. He just went, no. Like, but <laughs> Shaolin monks shave their head and Ho Sung Pak's like, nope, not shaving my head. So they went, well, are you sure? It was like, yep, yeah, not shaving my head. It's like, well, okay, sure, you can be Liu Kang. You can have hair, even though it's gonna be weird for a Shaolin monk to have hair. And this is where, like, writing the dumb stuff into the story comes in because like, they were kind of annoyed behind the scenes that, like, they had the Shaolin monk character, he didn't kill anybody, but he had that hair. And even though nobody really gave a shit, it annoyed them behind the scenes. So what they did is they rewrote Liu Kang's backstory to say that he wasn't just a Shaolin monk. He was a Shaolin monk who'd rebelled against his order. <laughs> and he, as a sign of his rebellion, he grew his hair out and styled it into a mullet. Oh, I, I actually really like that. That's like, isn't that a really neat character? Why does Liu Kang have a mullet if he's a monk? It's like he's rebelling and it's like, you know, as a sign of his rebellion, he grows his hair out. And he has the mullet, and it's all like, oh, re rebellion mullet! It's like, it fixes the problem and makes it cooler. And that's why they ended up introducing the character of Kung Lao. So they'd have, like, a more traditional style, like, Shaolin monk character, but they put their Mortal Kombat S twist on it by giving him the Razor hat. So, because that's something Mortal Kombat always does. Imagine if the guy that got in for the next one was like, I don't want to shave my hair off either. <laughs> Every single time they get a monk in. <laughs> He <laughs> just wants to have different hair. Oh, we're just gonna have to hire a bald guy to play a monk. And as you mentioned, that makes the character of Liu Kang really interesting. Because, like, you know, it was pretty common back then when you're making fighting games to just make generic stock character archetypes, wasn't it? Like, how many fighting games have, like, just the Bruce Lee equivalent? <laughs> That's why I think Mortal Kombat has always done so well with, like, you know, just a general audience because it's not afraid to make the weird, interesting characters. Like, even, like, their most basic archetypes of, like, the ninja. Like, the ninja is such a basic fucking character archetype for a fighting game. Their ninjas all have something that differentiates them. Like, they control an individual element. So even like their most basic stock characters have something about them that makes them stand out while they're not at all. It's like, I, I feel like it's one of those games where they'll just keep adding lore until everything and nothing makes sense. And that's why I love it so. Like, never forget that it is Mortal Kombat canon that Sub-Zero died and got replaced by a character called Sub-Zero. I remember you telling me about this. Yeah, like the, the Sub-Zero in the first and I think second games is not the Sub-Zero that's in later games. That's his brother who's also called Sub-Zero and they eventually... It wasn't until Mortal Kombat 11 they established that Sub-Zero is a mantle. And the way they revealed that is through character-specific matchups. If you make Sub-Zero fight Sub-Zero, you can randomly get a voice line where it's like, Grandfather, yes, earn my mantle. Grandfather. Defeat me to earn my mantle. Because uh, <laughs> in Mortal Kombat 11, every theoretical matchup is actually a dream match that hasn't actually happened. It's just a potential what if if it did. Oh my god, they don't need lore for that. It's just a, it's a game. No, that's the thing, but they did put it in. And if you match characters against each other, like, you know, the same character fighting themselves, like, there's multiple different explanations for what is actually going on. Um, to highlight the fact it's a what if. Like, sometimes if you make Sub-Zero fight Sub-Zero, he's fighting his granddad. Other times he's fighting his brother before he becomes Noob Sabot. Other times it's just they've been cloned and it's like, oh, what the fuck? It's so good! 